Hello everybody, I want to have an episode of Mixed Mowers and today's episode we're going to be look, taking a little look at um, a couple of lawn mowers, uh, one of which I found on the curbside and the other one has been sat in my yard for a little, for a little while but the engine um, is terminal. The one I found on the side of the road, haven't even tried to fire it yet but the engines look very very similar and so do the decks. I'm hoping to do a, um, an engine swap today and try and make one out of two, that's the general idea. These are very very cheap economy mowers, that sort of thing you pick up out of Tesco's or B&Q, something like that, they're not going to fetch a lot of money but hopefully just for a sort of an hour's investment should get this little engine up and running and uh, hope to take, turn a little tiny profit on these little tiny lawn mowers. That's a general idea. If this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell and set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one's on a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6.30pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out these two little lawn mowers. Okay, let's have a little look outside, see what we can find. So I'm trying out a new mic today, uh, a lavalier mic on my uh, on my shirt. See how that how that performs. So it's gonna be a bit, this video is gonna be a bit of a trial and error with regards to the audio, but we should see how we get on. Okay, so here's the two mowers in question. <coughs> um, got a chainsaw running in the background. Someone's having a bit of tree work done, so to forgive me for the noise, but I can't be odd. So this red one, the Champion. Um, the engine's terminal, no compression on this engine at all. But this one here, um, I believe to be good. Now the decks look very, very similar. There's plenty of compression on this one, but I haven't even tried to start it yet. Um, so no compression versus compression. The decks look very, very similar. I'm hoping to get this engine running, if it runs, engine off onto this one, because the grass box doesn't fit, vice versa. I don't have a box for this one, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, so hopefully we can do a bit of an engine swap on here and uh, try and make um, two mowers into one and uh, try and make a bit of profit on these two mowers. Let's get this mower in the shed first and we'll uh, get up on the stand so we can't get just to fire up and what have you and then we'll go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to try and put some fuel on this mower and see how we get on. There's no fuel in there at all, absolutely bone dry. So let's just put a bit in and see what we don't get. Hopefully it'll run, so I haven't even, haven't even tried it. Oh, HTD caps off. I wonder if that I wasn't starting in the first place, why they threw it out. But this is on the side of the road, this one. Uh, the choke is, uh, the throttle lever's not, not too clever on this either, so I have to sort out a throttle lever for it. Let's see what we get. Okay, nothing at all. So let's get up on the bench and we'll have a little look to see what we can't do with this one. See if we can't get it to run. If it runs, engine swap. They look about the same. Um, in comparison, that may be a little bit higher, but it does sit quite low in the deck. So hopefully it'll, it'll go. We shall have to wait and see. These are generally quite good little engines, but uh, there's no compression on that one at all. That one's completely toast. So up on the bench and we'll go from there. Okay, so it's up on the bench. Let's have a little look at what we can't do. What we've got in there, we've got a standard um, overhead valve uh, spark plug in there. So let's take that out and have a little look, see what that's doing. Try and remove him. Long old threads on these. Uh, it come and we've got an NGK BPR6ES good plug looks brand new actually but uh, it ain't doing nothing just yet so let me get a bit of calf spray and then we'll uh, put a bit of calf spray down the head and see if we can't get this machine to fire so a bit of calf spray down the old head. And I'll just put that plug back in quite quickly. Right, let's give it a pull, see what I get. Mm. 
nothing at all. So that could be no spark issue. So let's try and remove the um, plug again. So take the plug out. Let's check inside the HT, that looks good. And let's put the plug on. Just want to get a little tiny clamp just to clamp back the dead man's handle. Here's one. So let's clamp that back. The dead man is about as far back as it will go. And now I'm going to pull this engine over and see if we don't get a spark off of it. I'm not seeing a spark. It's hard to tell because these um, HT leads are not very not very well placed. Right, let's try that. Right, so we have no spark. No spark at all. So let's get a, um, a D-Walk impact with a 10 mil. Start to remove some of these nuts and bolts. lift up should be nothing else holding that on oh, my fuel cap maybe that comes off put that back on now the fuel cap of the um flywheel is very rusty so may, that may be affecting it may not be getting the air gaps and we may just sand this back first and then we'll try again i take the coil off and we'll um, give a call a bit of a sand down as well and then we'll go from there. So quick tidy up and I'll come back. Okay, for some of you that may remember, I did a video not so long ago about core testing. So I've had to clean the magnets up, um, which will not generate the spark, but it will give a better air gap. If the air gap is not set correctly, then um, the coil um, cannot, cannot measure the distance between and won't create the spark. So I'm just gonna test this now. We're coming in at 10.7. 10.7, 10.7. It's a little bit high, but do you know what? That should be a good coil. So hopefully, what we can now do is clean this, um, clean this coil up, get a bit of a, a bit of a, a happy birthday, and with that new gap, uh, new uh, magnet now um, tidied up, um, that might improve the air gap we got on it. So I'm just going to give us a quick tidy. I'll come back and we'll test the spark again. Okay, so core's now been gapped. We've had it tested. Call is call is good, or I, I, I deem it to be good. Now I'm going to test the spark again. Uh, spark plug will be even better. So let's put that in. Let's tie the dead man's handle back again. And instead of um. Instead of doing it with the pull cord on, I'm going to do it just with a drill to try and knock it over. You may not see if it sparks, but I will if it sparks. Nothing. Nothing at all. So, we've got a good coil, good, good plug, a uh, dead man switch. So look at that. That's next. So off. Okay, I think I've got it. Let me just show you. So just inside here is a dead man switch. This little tiny plate uh, here comes over to the switch and it activates the switch just here. And when you depress it, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. It's not actually doing anything. Okay, so I think the switch is faulty. Now, the problem I have is, is I don't have a spare switch for that. But I'm wondering what the other switch is 
on the other machine? That's my next question. So let's try. Have I got to remove the flywheel to do that? I suspect I have. That's oh, been held on there. I don't think I can get a 10 mil in there. No, that'd be a flywheel off job, which would be a pain in the bottom. A flywheel off and new switch. What first thing I'm going to do is check the other mower to see what switch is on there, and I'll come back. Okay, I think we're winning. I found another switch which looks relatively similar to what we've got. Might be a little bit longer, but we should better sneak it in there. That'll be nice. So let's get. Um, this flywheel's got to come off in order for me to um, get at the switch. So we zip that off. That all comes off together. I'll do it the old fashioned way rather than firing up the old air compressor. So let's uh, put that on. Just like so. Get a lever, find somewhere half sensible, bit of a tap. There it goes. There's a flywheel. And here's the little tiny switch just down here, which will require a 10 mil on this one. It was an eight mil on the other. So they are slightly different. That just comes off of there, like so. And then we can work that around. Get a fit for that gap it did on the other one. Come on, baby. There's the, uh, the old switch. Let's remove the tab. That tab should just come off, hopefully. It did on the other one. It's one of the ones that bites on. I don't want to break. Uh, I can break this one, that's right. It doesn't matter if it just pulls off. I'll try and keep the connection if I can. If not, I'll take the cable off the other one. There it goes, what we've lost. We lost the entire cable, okay, no problem. All we do is we just reroute this wire around. Take that off of there. I'll go and get the cable off the other machine. Give us two ticks. Okay, so the other cable is slightly different. It wires up to a different, to a different type of uh, assembly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna repair this one. Just wanna find myself a little tiny connection that will fit onto um, my terminal. Let's just check, uh, that's the old switch. This is the new one that I go onto there. But what I like to do is get a very small pair of pliers and just ever so slightly squeeze them in. Just a touch, not a lot. Just so we get a good connection. Onto there. Yeah, that'd be good. And then I can get my cable, which has got an end on here. Put that in there. That's good. Squeeze that down with a pair of uh, pair of crimps and I will insulate this as well let's try and wind that in so that's now in place let's try and operate the dead man yeah that seems to be working okay no clicking noise on this one and then what we can then do is put this terminal on the back and get the fit on it's got to bend it down slightly gently gently come on that might be about all right that's now on so now um, we can now put this flywheel back on onto the keyway, which is going to be around about there. 
just want to screw it down first. <coughs> That's all the way down. That's gone down. And then we can then get the cover and the cup all to line up. There's three little tiny holes for it to go. It's going to go that way, I dare say. Something like that. <clears throat> Put that on. Do that up. Right, so now, by rights, we should be in a situation where we can turn this over and test for spark one more time. So let me just get my drill. So let's now get the clamp. We'll clamp that bale back. And we'll put the spark plug somewhere there. And now we're going to test for spark one more time. The lever's now shut, so hopefully we can now send a signal. Not seeing one. Seeing one. I'll try and ground it out. Let's try there. Not seeing one. That's all the way in, that can't go anymore. Just want to check this connection is definitely on. Yeah, that's definitely on. We've got a gap there, the core is good, that's all on, that's activating. So what we're going to do is put another plug in. Let's try a brand new Briggs overhead valve plug. Let's try one of those. Okay, bail's back. Yep, spark. Good, good. So we now have a spark. So that brand new NGK is actually no good at all. So let's now put in, um, oh, too excited. Let's um, put this back on. And give that a pull. And let's see if this machine will now fire up. Fire it up, fire it up. Okay, let's have a go of this now. See what we get. Okay, so it all it all runs. I don't think it runs off its own back. I don't think. No. No, it don't run off its own back just yet, so we'll want to carburet it clean. Right, what I'm now going to do is take the all out of this machine and um, tip it up, undo the three bolts, take the blade off, take the engine off. That'll come out. I'll take the same off the other engine, three bolts on the bottom, uh, blade off, come back in with the red the red deck and we're going to try and fit this onto the uh, the other deck. Okay, so the engine is now off the green one, off the red one, and we can now hopefully try and fit this uh, other engine onto this red deck. That's the theory. So hopefully it will fit without giving me too much dramas. Hopefully it will go on. Bear with. That doesn't look too shabby. We can probably get away with that. So let me get it bolted down and uh, I'll come back to you in two ticks. It doesn't look too bad on there. It actually fits quite well. They're pretty much the same sort of engine. So uh, 
which should all be well and good, should be good. I've got a little tiny cover here to go on as well, which should be good as well to stop any grass getting up in between. And then hopefully we can fit the blade adapter to it, sharpen the blade up, all that sort of good stuff. So give us two ticks and I'll come back. Okay, engine is now on. Um, it fits absolutely A1, no problems at all, which is good. Just got to fit the dead man's handle up onto the bale, up the top. I've uh, got to fit that, got to fit the throttle, but the throttle is actually broken, so I need to find a donor one of these within my uh, arsenal of spares. So let me fit the dead man's handle and this throttle assembly. Once that's done, I'll come back to you, and then we're going to try and fire it up again to see if it won't run. But from what I remember, it, it wouldn't run off its own back last time, but uh, I want to see how it is before we actually go to do a carburetor clean if need be. So let me get the cables all hooked up, and I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, so the first issue I've got is I've hooked the dead man up and that's that's not going to activate it. So I need to do a cable fix on that. So I'm going to cut the cable right up the top near the uh, near the dead man itself, near the connection. Cut that. And then what I want to do is with my cable join device is just take up about 20 mil slack, which should give me enough to operate this handle. So I'm coming over to the, over to the vice, which is just behind you guys. Let me bring you guys a bit back a bit further that's it somewhere in there and I'll bring the lawnmower down through come on Mr lawnmower down you come and all we're going to do is bring this all the way down to about there I might just have to disconnect this 10 mil very quickly and then we're going to do a cable a cable fix on this just to take the slack up. So I'm going to remove a 10 mil bolt from there. Take that connection off. And we want about 20 mil, give or take. And all we're going to do is get my cable crimp, put it on, go down about 20 mil. It's going to be about there. I need my snippers, which may be, maybe baby, they're down here. So I want my snippers, and I want to take 20 mil off of this cable. So let's take 20 mil off. It's going to be about there and then get my cable crimper put that on put my new dead man's handle in the dog leg end and about there yeah gonna be about there gonna be about right do that up about there and very gently Push that into a vise. Going to be get rid of it out of the cable. Whatever cable. Going to be about there. And squeeze that on down, all the way down, as tight as you can get it. And then just move it back in the vise. My vise is quite well battered. It's quite old. My vise. So I'm just going to move it about to where I've got a good edge. It's going to be about there. Squeeze it all the way down. Hang on it, and then back that off. That's now fixed, and then now fully opened, fully closed, exactly where it needs to be, and that's a per that's a permanent fix. That block's going to hold up. Yeah, they're not brilliant these blocks. You can't go too tight; they just they just break. So go careful with them. So that's now working. Got to do the throttle, and I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, so this is where we are. Um, I've managed to find myself a little um, throttle cable, which is off of a mount field, okay, which is just hither. There it is, but it's way too long for what I need. So that's a good cable, and it all, and it all runs exactly as it should do, so no problems there. So I'm going to remove this cable here. That can come on off. And I'll get all the way down in there, look. Oh, my Lord. That goes, that goes all the way down onto a, onto the actual throttle, onto a choke, onto the choke arm itself. I've not seen that before. That's a new one on me. So let's remove this little air box. Oh, 
Let's we'll remove that. Take that out of the way. I'll take the box right off. Oh, uh, yeah, if I can. Without breaking anything. Oh, come out. Yeah, I can't breathe it. Yeah, it's better. Okay, so throttle cable's up here. Oh, sorry, choke cable. So that's no good to us. Okay. Um, although the cable is quite good. So you can, you can keep these cables just by taking these out. Okay, so to keep that cable, because it is a good cable, but it's no good to me for today's experiment. So I've got a cable here, which is off a mount field. I'm going to put that onto the um, top of the arm up here, but look how much slack I've got left. I've got loads. So I'm going to show you a little trick now of how to make that fit. So give us two ticks and I'll be back. Okay, so this is where we are. Now the other cable um, joins here and then it runs the... Um, just via the core cable through up to here, choke to go forwards and back. So this would be in reverse. So I have to take the sticker off the top of that throttle arm. However, all we have to do is roughly guesstimate, give it enough cable so it's not going to snag. Okay, and that's going to go, I'll try and show you guys as much as I can. So that's going to go about there, okay? So we're happy with that. So we now know that this cable all the way forward is going to be choke, which is going to be about about there. So give it about another 10 mil, 15 mil more, and then cut that cable just there. Right, cut it off. That's now gone. <clears throat> now make a little tiny mark on this bit of cable, and get your uh, D wall, and then remove the cable arm off again. Okay. With a little tiny mark, which should be, let's have a little look, see roughly where it was. Yeah, that's it, gonna be there, there it is there. All we now wanna do is very gently, with a pair of good snips, is just, just open up this cable, but we don't wanna cut the center part of it out. And if you bend it ever so slightly, you'll start to find where it actually is. So I'm just snipping away, take some of the armor away. And once you find the copper, the, the, the core bit, you don't want to snip that middle bit. That's the bit you want to try and keep. So it's a bit fiddly, but just take your time. You can't bend it because you're going to bend the actual, the actual um, center piece. That piece then comes off. Okay. So now when we go to fit this, that will fit into there, <coughs> and then that will fit down to there. So let's uh, let's just fit that on now. <coughs> where it needs to be, uh, it's going to be that way up, so that goes into there, okay, so we're happy with that so far. Now bearing in mind I'm doing this to save myself about 20 quid, okay, because the new cable is about 20 quid. So now that cable now goes out and in exactly as it should do, okay, choke, uh, uh, choke is off all the way back idle, that's going to be um, half throttle and then choke is all the way forward. Now, all we now have to do is put a bend into here. So I'm going to get my Z bender. These are absolutely brilliant. If you haven't got one, get one. Measure it all the way forward. That's where you need to be. It's going to be about right where it is, do you know? So all we're now going to do, you can trial and error, put your Z bender in, bend it on over, lift it, tilt it, push it back take it out and then we're going to try that I'm going to put that into there it's a little bit long so we can come back a bit bearing in mind we're on we're on idle now so take it off just a touch <coughs> and go again so bend lift turn twist up once it fits into place it'll be lovely so now that's a little bit too short for what we want. It will choke it, but it won't idle it back. Okay, so we're a little, we're a little tiny bit short, okay? So take him back out, and we're gonna go one more time. But this time, yeah, I'll be fine, I think. I should better reach that. Take that off. You can, you can adjust it here, don't forget. So, bend, tip, turn, up. Right, so now that should be plenty for what we need, okay? I'm now going to take this off and fit that onto our carburetor. And now we'll be set into, set into choke all the way forward. I can now push that all the way forward. 
and that's going to be choked about there. That's where it wants to be. If I hold that and then take it off a choke, fully functional carburetor. Okay. So let me now do that up. So you haven't got a Z bender, you can get them from Stens, you can get them off of eBay, you can get them from Terra Fixes All, you can get them just about anywhere, okay? But that's what they are, little tiny Z benders. And they're just great for putting the Zs into throttle, into throttle cables. So let's set it to choke. It's gonna be about there. That's choked all the way. So now let's do that up. And now onto idle. So there's your idle, there's your choke. Fully functional throttle cable. How do you like that? Yeah, so now we can now put this um, crank trace breather pipe back on. That goes onto there. And that's just saved me, as I say, 20 odd quid, 15, 20 quid, just by having the right tools in the shop. So let's now put all that back together. That shouldn't be a problem. It's quite a poor design, to be fair. There's nothing else to support that cable, but uh, it's what it is. It's what it is. Let's put these little 10 mils on. Okay, so this is now complete. Hopefully it's gonna fire up for me. We'll wait and see. Um, throttle cable is now working as it should do. That's no problem at all. And dead man now works. So I put some more petrol on it. I have flooded the carburetor out as well to make sure I'm getting fuel coming down through. On to choke. Let's pull the cord and see what we get. Fantastic. So it runs, it goes on to choke. Does exactly what it should do. It's not a very powerful engine, but then these little machines aren't. I'll give it a little run, see how it gets on, come back to it in about five or ten minutes and see um, if it starts up on its own accord again. But it's doing everything it should do. Nice and easy. Okay, so that's now done and dusted. A little tiny Power Devil um, machine, Tesco's. Tesco's B&Q um, hybrid um, Frankenstein mower is what it is. It's got a bit of everything on there, a bit of mount field on there. It's got a bit of this and a bit of that, but that's exactly what I do in the old mixed mower shop is get a lawnmower in that wasn't running, found it on the curbside and with some donor parts from other bits and pieces and a bit of, bit of engineering and making stuff work and making stuff fix. That's exactly how it is. And that lawnmower will now fetch a pretty little penny. It's never ever gonna fetch any good money, but it's gonna be money in the bank. And that, that's all that matters. So that will then go on to an next mower sale and to buy more mowers in for more content for you girls and guys. Hopefully you enjoy this little video and especially like the Z bender bit where I fixed the cable. That's another nice little hack for you there if the cable is too big. Sometimes when you're swapping handles over, the cables are way too big for the mower and that's one way of trimming them right all the way down. As long as you're careful, you can overcome that and make it look really, really tidy as like it's supposed to be on there. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, you know what to do. Give us a thumbs up. Leave any comments you've got down below. Positive or negative, I don't really mind. I try and answer all my comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll be told of future videos and future live streams, which I do on a Saturday night at half past six UK time. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.